today on an all-new Dr. Phil. A cold case mystery. Who killed 14-year-old Lori Ann Hill? An ex-boyfriend accused. You're convinced that he killed your sister. I know he did it. The evidence examined. Did you have four different alibis? I've always said I was at the mall. Did you lie to the police? No, sir. Here you're telling police those were bold-faced lies. This looks very suspicious. They should have hung you 20 years ago. Let's do it. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. Take I'm going to get you the help that you need. Five, four. This is going to be a changing day in your life. It's a 29-year-old cold case mystery that has one man feeling persecuted and one woman clearly out for revenge. The story started on a cold autumn night just a few days before Halloween, when a 14-year-old girl was out celebrating with a guy she had just started dating. But the evening turned tragic, and in fact, it made national headlines. Who killed 14-year-old Lori Ann Hill? Lori Ann was laid to rest in 1985 after she was murdered and found naked in a wooded area in Swanton. Her case went cold until three years ago. That's when investigators made Lori's ex-boyfriend, Walter Zimbeck, a suspect due to his admitted lies he told investigators at the time. Scratches on his arms the day after the murder and no solid alibi. I haven't had a chance in 27 years to miss my sister. It's been so consumed with catching Walt Zimbeck. Walter, can we get you for comment? I have nothing to say right now, thank you. Did you kill Lori Ann Hill? <laughs> no comment, no comment. New details tonight on the 1985 murder of 14-year-old Lori Ann Hill. The charges against Walter Zimbeck have been dismissed. It's a bittersweet day, but I'm glad it's turned out the way it has. Walter Zimbeck walked away a free man. But for Rachel Hill, Lori's older sister, things aren't over for Zimbeck. I hate you, I know you killed Lori. Well, the victim, Lori Ann Hill, never returned home that night and was found murdered four days later. Her sister, Rachel, claims she was last seen arguing with her ex-boyfriend, Walt Zimbeck, near her home. I was 16 years old when my baby sister, Lori, was murdered. Lori was 12 when she met Walt. We lied to our mom and told her that Walt was 16. He was really 18 years old. He was a stalker. Lori and Walt dated for about three months. Then she just moved on to a different person. On October 16th, 1985, Walt gave Lori an ultimatum. Stay with the boyfriend or come back to me. Lori decided to stay with her new beau, and on October 25th, Lori was missing. Lori had gone to a Halloween party with her new beau. She got in an argument with him and walked into town, catching a ride midway. Lori had missed her 11 o'clock curfew, so my mother was already calling the local PD. While everyone was out searching for Lori, Walt stayed with my mom, laid in fetal position, and cried like a baby unconsolably for hours. On Tuesday, October 29th, a deer hunter came across my sister's naked body, beaten to oblivion. My father came into the house, and he turned to my mom and he said they shot her. He beat her so bad that they thought he had shot her. I punched the wall and then I went outside and was just screaming, no, not her. And then I went and identified her. She was so dirty and there was so much blood, her hair. She'd been beaten in the head so bad she had bald spots in her very, very thick hair. And her eyes were open and I thought she'd been shot too. There was a hole in the center of her head, and her right ear was almost gone. And I learned animals had eaten it. But it wasn't a gunshot. It was rapid blows with a blunt instrument. I've blamed myself for 29 years for not being there for Lori. But I am 100% positive that Walt is my sister's killer. Well, Rachel claims Walt's story regarding his whereabouts the night her sister was brutally murdered has actually changed four different times. Walt is a sociopath, evil, evil, bad 
man. Walt killed Lori because she didn't want anything to do with Walt anymore. In 1991, I began to suspect Walt. Walt had taken my babysitter out. When they came home, I began to hear my babysitter screaming, bloody murder, help me, get off me. I ran to the room they were in, and he was on top of her. He had already ripped her shirt open. Her bra was ripped. She had blood coming from her nose and her mouth. I screamed at him, get off of her, and reached behind my bedroom door, grabbed the shotgun, and hit him in the head with the stock. And he's screaming at me, that bitch owed me. At the moment that I'm actually picking up the shotgun, it came to me, you killed Lori just from the viciousness of what he had done to her in a matter of two minutes. I wish I would have blown his head off. All right, Rachel, I'm glad to meet you, but really sorry for the circumstance. Thank you very I much. I wish we were talking about a hundred other things, right? Yes, sir. Y you've lost your baby sister. I have. And um, that's been a long time, but it's as fresh and raw with you right now, this minute, as it was the day it happened, true? Yes, sir. Now, you are convinced that Walter Zimbeck did this to your sister? Beyond a shadow well, of a doubt. How do you know that? You say, because you don't say, I suspect him. I think he should be investigated. You say, this is the murderer. You know who it is. How do you know that without a doubt? He was constantly in our lives, so I never thought anything about him. He was the best man at my wedding two years after he killed Lori. Um, in 1991, I had my baby sit her over to the house, and I wasn't out of the room two minutes when my babysitter, she began screaming. I, it, it was unmerciful, and I ran in there, and Walt was on top of her, and her head, her arms pinned down beside her. Well, how does that mean he murdered your sister? Um, when the police don't, went down and got the warrant, there were many 8 by 10 pictures of my sister hanging on his wall in 2008. There were, he had a picture of my sister on his bedside table, and there was an earring that they found. Walt said that that earring was given to him by me at the funeral as a memorial type thing for him to remember Lori always. Mm -hmm. This earring no longer was round. This earring no longer had any way to put it in your ear. It just looked like a little bent up piece of, of nothing. Okay, and what's your point? My point is he beat that earring out of my sister's head that, that night. That was your sister's earring? It was my earring that my sister was wearing that night. Oh, that's what I mean. She was yes. wearing it that night? Yes. Now, would you say this has consumed you? Absolutely, my entire life. Just two nights ago, you were hospitalized. Yes, I was. Because they thought you were a threat to others. You threatened Walter Zimbeck's lawyer. They were keeping me safe from hunting Amber and Walt down. Okay, so they, what they said was you were a threat to them, that you were going to hunt them down and kill them. Yes. And, in fact, you promised your father. His last breath. What did you t promise him? I promised him when the man, because when my father died, I didn't know that it was Walt. And I promised him when I found the man who killed her that I would kill him. He would die a torturous, horrid death. And you felt like you needed to make good on that? Yes. So you're convinced that he killed your sister? Beyond any shadow of a doubt. And you described this horrible death that, that she endured. And there's no question the manner in which she died. She was brutally beaten to death, right? Yes. And you believe he did it? I know he did it. And you've pledged to your father to kill this man in a slow and torturous death. I did. Are you going to make good on that? I can't. Got five granddaughters. Because you know he's here today. I know he's here. And I've asked your security to just watch for just the one symptom, and that'd be my chin starting to go. You want to talk to him 
with me there. Yes, sir. You want to discuss this with him, why? Yes, sir. Because you are the no <laughs> man. <laughs> and, and you won't fall for his attorney's cutesy, um, I'm so cute and sexy, look at me, you know, and the, the, the flipping of the hair and the laughing in my face. They're not going to laugh in my face with you sitting here. Well, the last time Rachel did see uh, Walter Zembeck was in the courtroom two years ago. Uh, but they're going to face each other next after the break. When I learned that Lori had been murdered, I was crushed. The police did do a polygraph test, and my DNA was tested against the DNA found on Lori's body. The rage I feel about Walt is overwhelming, and I can't deal with it. Even though I cannot kill Walt Zimbeck, I do not hesitate to say that I wouldn't mind seeing his spine severed so that he has to go through a torture every single day like me. I've never hated somebody so bad in my life. Rachel says she will not stop pointing the finger at Walt for her sister's murder and says she is determined to put the final nail in his coffin. But Walt, he says, not true. He says he is innocent, and he even has proof that he did not kill Lori. Rachel has become fixated on me as the one and only person of interest in her sister's death, but I had nothing to do with it. I've always been in love with Lori, and I still love her even today. Lori was planning on leaving the boy she was seeing the night of the party she was supposed to have told him that. That night, I went to Southwick Mall with some friends. At 1.30 in the morning, I got a phone call from a police officer asking me if I had seen or heard from Lori, and I told him I had not. The day after Lori disappeared, I saw Rachel at her parents' home. I did not have any scratches, blood, or any mark whatsoever on my body. I was with the family the entire time helping them search for Lori. When I learned that Lori had been murdered, I was crushed. The police did do a polygraph test, and the polygraph test came back that I was telling the truth. Later, when the cold case was open, my DNA was tested against the DNA found on Lori's body, and it did not match. The police have no evidence against me whatsoever. I'm innocent. All right, well, Walt is going to join us now with his attorney, Amber. Now, you understand, we're not going to have shenanigans here. We're going to, yeah, we're going to have a, a conversation about this, and I have yes, your sir. commitment to that. Yes, you do. Okay, if Walt and his attorney, Amber, can join us now. Is the um, security man close? Very. Thank you. Amber, Dr. Phil. Good morning. Walt, how are you, sir? Good morning, sir. Right here, if you would. Thank you for being here, Amber. Thank you for, for coming. You have been listening to the show so far, correct? Yes, sir, we have. How do you feel sitting across from the man you believe bludgeoned your sister to death? Absolutely sick to my stomach because I know you killed Lori. I know it, and you know it, and you know it. See? Well, why did you want to be here today? This is my first chance since all the trial and everything to be able to give my side of the story of what mm -hmm. actually has happened. Mm -hmm. What is your side of the story? I'm, you say you know she's completely wrong because you know you didn't do it, right? That's correct. And you've not been convicted of doing it. That's but correct. But you've been accused of doing it. You've been taken to trial. The jury was hung. And at this point, you understand that there is some basis for her suspicions from her standpoint, or you think no? I think she's lost her mind. Is there any valid reason for her to be suspect of you? I can't think of anything that has ever happened in my lifetime around her family or myself that would even make her think that. Well, did you lie to the police? Um, never lied to the police. I'd give two conflicting stories at one time where I left out the fact that I was actually with a girl the night that this took place. But you never lied to the police? No, sir. The reason I ask that is because mm -hmm. on December 30th of 2008, the prosecutors say there was an interview with you, and you were confronted with your 1985 statements. And they say here in their presentation to the court 
that Zimbeck admitted that his statements to investigating officers in 1985 regarding his activities on October 25th, including his purported time at home with Sandy, were lies that you admitted that. In fact, they say, okay, I'm gonna ask you this again. You gave two different statements to two different police officers, and both of them we now know were lies, right? Because you weren't home that night, to which you say, right. And then they say, what did you do that night? And you said, well, I was at home at seven and I went to sleep at 11, which isn't true because your mom says you weren't home. You said, right, I wasn't home. Then four days later, you talk to a different police. They say, what did you do? You say, I went to Southwick, hung out with this girl. I can't remember her last name. She was at my house from 10 till two, which wasn't true, right? She wasn't at your house from 10 to two. Your answer, no, she was not. Question, so that's twice. The two stories that weren't true that you had given to police just after your girlfriend is found murdered. You say, uh-huh. Question, you flat out lied. No other way to put it. Where were you? I was here. Where? Well, you weren't there. Then they ask you again, where were you? You say, I was here. But a whole other made up story, uh-huh. And they say, all right, those statements that you gave were, and you finish the sentence and say lies. Uh, that can't, I would never say that. I've never said that. All right, so the police are lying here. Definitely. I just asked you if you lied to police, you said no, never. And here you're telling police, in quotes, no, nah, I'm not denying that, those were bold-faced lies. I told bold-faced lies. Well, that's his, that was the police officer's statement that I made bold-faced lies. Did you tell different stories? Did the, they just, the where'd they get those? If you the didn't make them up, where, where'd they get them? How'd they know what to make up? The only difference that I gave in the two stories was that I was with, I, the, where I told them I was with a girl one night and then the other time I didn't. The first story, uh, first November 1st statement, I did not tell them that I was with Sandy. And in the second interview, I did tell them I was with Sandy. That's the only differences in the two statements that I gave in 1985. Why would you tell them, why would there be two versions at all? I mean, you just tell them where you are and what you're doing. What, I mean, somebody's in, dead here. In Somebody you care exactly. about. Exactly. In 1985, I was 18 years old. I was scared. I was nervous. Um, why do you want to go out and tell somebody, well, here's my girlfriend, been found, and here I am with another girl? Well, wouldn't you think your fidelity would take a back seat to finding out what happened? to this innocent girl that's disappeared and been bludgeoned to death? At this point, yes, Most, and even then too. I'm just saying, then, when all this was happening, um, you just, it was, it was why, why tell that I was with another girl? Do you support him that these statements are lies? What I support is that when he was giving those statements and they were audio recording them, what, if you listen, I know how it looks on paper, but if you listen to what he was saying, he was just, as they were talking, saying, uh-huh, uh-huh, right. And so you see a portion of what was said there, but not everything. So his affirmative sta statements, the uh-huh, uh-huh, right, look bad on paper. I understand that. Yeah, that's why I ask you, do you think she has any basis for being suspicious of you whatsoever? You said none. I, 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 this looks very suspicious. I understand that, Dr. Phil, and I think based on what she's been told by the police, I can understand why she would think what she does. You're just a liar and a murderer. I'm surprised to hear you say you don't understand why she would be suspicious given what has been put into the record. Excuse me, Dr. Phil, I witnessed you on top of my babysitter. You had her straddled on my bed, and don't shake your head. You That's weren't the there. That's lie I've ever heard in my life. You busted her lip and her nose. You ripped her shirt open. That is, you're just a liar and a murderer. A you... liar and a murderer. But the police weren't called, and no oh, reports were made. Fulton okay. County had all of that. He was never questioned. It makes no sense. It does make no sense. And how do you what? know he if wasn't? You know You're so a public defender. You were a public defender who needed your daddy to do the whole thing for you. So why don't you just stop now? She has as much right to make her statements and say what she okay. wants to as hear as, as do you. 
Thank you. That's what we call That's, a conversation. It's right. not you just reading people the riot oh. act. They get to well, say what they want to well, say. You can disagree, right. but you don't tell her why did she just shut up because she is my guest here. You're I've right. asked her here because right. I want to hear what she has to say. Did your mother tell two different stories? Well, my mother never told a story in 1985 whatsoever. They don't even have a statement from my mother in 1985. Excuse me, Dr. Fell. His mother at his father's funeral pulled me into uh, the private like family talk room and told me how upset that you were that you couldn't find Lori that night. How you went out and looked for her and looked for her. First I've ever heard of it. Well, I'm, um, yeah, I'm looking at the interview with, with your mother here mm -hmm. uh, where she is recounting her recollections of that night and she said you left the apartment early in the evening. You were going to find Lori. Thereafter, she received three phone calls from Lori over the course of several hours that mm -hmm. during those phone calls, she told Lori that you were not home. Thereafter, she received two phone calls from Lori's family and or the police looking for her and you were not home until you came home very late with another man and there were no girls there. That's what they say she told them. Then she recounted the following story. She said, well, he left the apartment early in the evening. He was going to find Lori. They were supposed to have gone out that night. Then she received three phone calls. She did not know who two of the calls were from. Above, she said they were from Lori. Uh, then she says one was from Lori. Then a crying and angry <clears throat> Lori asked for you, but was told you were not home. Then she said when the last call was re received, there was a man standing by the front door of the apartment who she said she could not identify who told her that you were in your bedroom with a girl. She opened the door to the bedroom and told the girl to get out and told you that you had a call. You and the girl were sitting on the floor talking when she opened the bedroom door. And she, they said this was new evidence. So they went and talked to the girl, and the girl says, no, didn't happen. It's not what she testified to in court. No. It just seems mm -hmm. like there's an awful lot of this happened, that happened, what, what happened, which I'm surprised to hear you say you don't understand why she would be suspicious given what has been put into the record. All right, let's take a break. Walt says Rachel should look in the mirror if she wants to find the real killer. Even though I cannot kill Walt Zimbeck, I do not hesitate to say that I wouldn't mind seeing his spine severed. I do wonder if Rachel was involved somehow in Lori's death. Rachel has never been cleared as a suspect. I do wonder if Rachel was involved somehow in Lori's death. Rachel was kind of the black sheep of the family and had a reputation of hanging out with drug addict people. It is my theory that Rachel was involved with some drug dealers and a kilo of cocaine came up missing. I believe that Rachel could have stolen drugs and they were trying to get their drugs back. The two guys I think that got Lori attacked her thinking she was Rachel. The police had just went down other roads, but Rachel has never been cleared as a suspect. What's your reaction to that? It may... Uh, really? Are you kidding me? Killing Lori? Do you think I would have hunted and stayed on you for all these years? Are you out of your mind? I didn't kill Lori. She was my best friend. We, we showed horses all across the country together. She was my buddy. A kilo of cocaine. Dr. Phil, right this second, I swear to you, I will take a lie detector right this second with or without him doing it, everything that I have told you is the God's honest truth. But you said that you felt guilty at the time because you weren't home because you were I, out partying and drinking. I, no, I was drinking. I was. That's what I said. That is the truth. I wasn't using drugs. All and, right, let's, let's get through this because I want to hear from you and, okay. and hear from you about this because okay. you say there are conflicting statements that he has made. I, I went through some of those. Uh -huh. Rachel says Lori broke up with Walt because he uh -huh. kept standing her up. Uh -huh. Walt says that you broke up because you had a busy schedule and that she had cheated on you. True? I didn't say she cheated on me, but I did have a busy schedule. I just started college. I was working a job. She was still in school. Obviously, we, there's not much time to be able to go out and do anything. Um, she just drifted away and ended up 
seeing the gentleman that she was with who took her and several of her friends back and forth to school. Mm -hmm. Rachel says Lori refused to get back together with Walt, and Walt says they began dating again. Why do you say that? She told you she wasn't going to have anything to do with him anymore? No more. He brought on October 16th, Sweetest Day, he brought her a teddy bear and gave her the ultimatum, leave Craig or else. And she told him to leave, and that was the last I knew of it. Is that true? I never gave her an ultimatum. Were you still involved with her? Uh, we hadn't been dating. We had just started kind of talking and getting back where we could arrange things where we could start seeing each other. Okay, according to Rachel, Walt had different alibis for the night Lori was murdered. One, he was working on his car. Two, he was out with a girl he met at the mall. Three, he was home watching movies with his mother. Four, he got into a fight at a bar. Then there actually was another. You were hanging out with friends at a mall, which is where you supposedly met this other girl. But did you have four different alibis? I was at the mall. I've always said I was at the mall. Uh, so why do you say he said he was home working on a car? Those are the stories that I've read out of the, from the different um, detectives where they question him and then they reprinted the papers like you have. Mm -hmm. um, and he told my mother when he got to our house that he had been in a bar fight that night because she asked him what happened and he had scratches. Do these look familiar? Because I was sitting in the blackberry bush you left her in and I, I got scratched while I was out there. So, did you give multiple alibis? No, I didn't. I've always said that I was at Southwick Mall. <laughs> Rachel says she spoke with Walt at 4 a.m. about Lori missing. Walt says he only spoke to the sheriff at and one, Lori's mother. Or between 1 or 1.30 is when the sheriff's called me at the house. So you never talked to her? Mm, maybe she talked to me then at 1 o'clock, but not at 4 o'clock. Did um, you talk to him at 4 o'clock? No, sir, and I couldn't have called, talked to you at 1. I didn't get home until 1.30. There you go. Then I didn't talk to you. I never said I did. You talked to me at around 4 o'clock. What did you talk about? Have you seen Lori? No. That was it. I, I, she's missing. We can't find her. And he wasn't I, a suspect to me or even Lori missing was like, oh, my God. I was just asking him. She knows him. He has a car. And so I was calling all the friends she had. So he wasn't a suspect he was, at that no. time? No. Oh, no. Because you said no, he no, was no. actually in your wedding. Yes. Two years later. Yes. You say Walt claimed he never saw Lori the day she disappeared, but witnesses yeah. say Walt was seen arguing with Lori the night that she disappeared. That's untrue. Yeah. Did you see her? Never seen her. You didn't see her that day at all? Never, never had any seen her. I didn't see her since Sweetest Day was the last time I seen her. You didn't? Never. So what do you think about what he's saying? He's lying. He's a liar. You have the paperwork well, and you're, you're so a liar. Perfect and I'm lying all the time. How come oh, everything I'm I say near, is a lie and you I'm, know everything? I'm nowhere near perfect. I've battled alcoholism because of what he's done. Well, Walt has maintained his innocence for 29 years in the murder of his ex-girlfriend, Lori Ann Hill. We're going to find out why Rachel says Walt's defense team is trying to blame some kind of voodoo cult for the murder of her 14-year-old sister. We'll hear of what mm -hmm. that's all about when we come back. After three years of trials, hearings, I've lost my business, I've lost my daughter, I've lost my self-esteem. I've sold every single thing I've owned to keep my house. They've tried me and found me not guilty. It's still ruined my life. Lori's murder has destroyed me. Well, Walt says Rachel is obsessed with making him pay for her sister's murder 29 years ago, even though he did not commit the crime. But Rachel says she knows he is guilty and is determined to find a way to nail him. Now, you just said a jury found you not guilty. That isn't true. It was a mistrial. No, sir. It was they not a mistrial. They didn't find you not guilty, though. Not Correct. a mistrial. I was not found not guilty. It was a mistrial. Okay. No, sir. It was not a mistrial. <clears throat> it was a hung jury. There's a big... A mistrial? Yes. Okay. Well, let's, let's use the right words because seven people... Well, said a they mistrial were was declared because the jury was unable to reach a verdict. But left it so that he could be tried again. And then the case was dismissed. Dismissed without prejudice. Correct. Correct. So they could refile the case 
if they chose to because it was dismissed without prejudice? We don't believe that they can, no. Well, you know, they disagree with you. Yeah, I'm aware of that. We have a statement from the prosecutors uh, that I'll just give you an excerpt. On July 6, 2012, at the conclusion of a three-week trial, a mistrial was declared by the judge mm -hmm. when the jury indicated it was unable to come to a unanimous verdict on the count charging Walter Zimbeck with the October 85 murder of Lori Ann Hill. However, because the state voluntarily dismissed the case without prejudice, it is not precluded from refiling charges against Mr. Zimbeck in the future if circumstances dictate since there is no statute of limitations on murder. Yes, I've heard that statement before, I believe. Yeah, so that's their position. Yours right. is different. It, it is. Now, there were two sticks that were on her stomach yeah. in the form of an upside-down cross, which causes y'all to speculate that there might have been some type of cult involvement here, some type of strange ritualistic killing, or what, tell me what your thoughts are about that. Based on what I saw um, with the inverted cross on her body, that was definitely a theory uh, that it could have been a ritualistic killing. Um, there was actually um, a psychic that was involved in the case back in the 1980s who suggested that perhaps it was a ritualistic killing at that time. Dr. Phil, mm -hmm. when you drag someone into a thicket of briars that are cutting you apart and you're at her head, would it not be more obvious that you're going to lay the stick, even if the sticks just blew there, but they were this way on Lori, right. going down and here, and if you're at her head, it's not an inverted cross. It would be the cross that you're sitting at her head putting onto her. You say that you have proof oh. that you didn't do this. And one of the things that you point to is that you were given a polygraph test in November of 1985, correct? Yes. There were several questions. The question was on or about October 25th. Do you know for sure who caused Lori Hill's death? Your answer was? No. Uh, then, on or about the 25th of October, did you participate in any manner to cause Lori Hill's death? Your answer was? No. Question, did you deliver any of the blows that caused Lori Hill's death? No. Were you personally present when Lori Hill was fatally struck? No. Did you place Lori Hill's body where the sheriff's officers found it? No. Uh, right now, do you know where any of Lori Hill's clothing was disposed of? No. And the results were that that was non-deceptive. You were telling the truth. That was the result and the conclusion of the polygraph examiner. Yes, sir. Now, we work with cutting-edge polygraph technology here yes. on the Dr. Phil Show, and we did ask uh, our expert, Jack Tremarco, to review this. And okay. he refers to this as a protocol that's no longer used. It is a test that the way that protocol worked was very hard to pass. In this case, if there was an error, it would seem that the error would be against him, not for him. And you passed that polygraph test. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you I say would, about that? And with that test, I would also wish the question had been how much volume had he taken I don't even to do, do that. The properly trained polygraph examiner yes. um, is, is going to screen Mm -hmm. for countermeasures and drugs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can't administer a test if there isn't reactivity mm -hmm. that creates a baseline and a differential. Mm -hmm. If he was flat because of tranquilizers of any sort, then Delicious. you wouldn't have any deflection from baseline, mm -hmm. so you wouldn't be found uh, deceptive, but you wouldn't be able to do the test because it looks at mm -hmm. differentials in the moment. I so understand. You have to admit that that is something that you have to consider. No, sir. She fought back. Yes, she did. So much so that her knuckles were broken. There was no DNA found on the body from him. There was no DNA found on the body from him. The DNA that was there was so dis disintegrated and of no use, they couldn't tell you 
whose DNA if there was nothing left. The way you've described mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. with blood and mm -hmm. multiple blows and oh, yes. all of this type thing, the interaction between the perpetrator and the victim was clearly a hands-on sort of thing. You also said that she fought yes. back. Yes, she did. So much so that her knuckles... Were broken. Were, were broken. Yes. But yet, you said he had scratches on his arms, but to hit somebody so hard or so many times that their knuckles would be broken, why did he not have any blows on... Why, why were there okay. no defensive wounds? There was, on his right eye, there was a huge blood spot that was testified during court by one of the witnesses. Yeah, you, that you, was not testified again. Dr. Phil, I took, I was, I did an interview uh, with Channel 24 News in Rachel and Lori's mom and daddy's front yard. Mm -hmm. And it shows no scratches whatsoever on me. He has a long sleeve sweater on. That your mama bought me. <laughs> Dr. It, Phil, I would like to take the polygraph test to and, assure you that there is nothing that I've said about him that is absolutely not the God's honest truth. Like what? What, what, what would you be asked on a polygraph? Um, if have I made up anything that I've said? Did I see Walt with the scratches? Did I see Walt with the blood marks in his eye? Did he attack my babysitter? Yeah. Did he rape another 14-year-old girl that he met at my sister's funeral? But how yeah. would you know Does that? And, sound... and she testified but, in court. But how would you know that? I mean, how? How would I, I'm sorry. How, how would you know that he had raped someone? I'd like to clarify the, the girl that she's talking about that says that I raped her, it was in court. Mm -hmm. This is a girl that says that I raped her and we dated for two years. She didn't know where I worked. She doesn't know where I live. She doesn't know what car I drove. She doesn't know the three guys that she said that also raped her with me. She knows absolutely nothing about me, my life, my friends, my family, where I lived, where I worked, nothing but yet I supposedly raped this girl? Well, generally, <laughs> rapists and their victims don't have a lot of... For a two-year, exactly. A two-year relationship of rape? I mean, is there an old consensual sex anywhere? Um, I mean, for two years, she just keep coming back, hey, rape me today? There was a statement from uh, one of the women uh, in the police report that said, you need to watch it or you're going to wind up like Lori when you had is asked her to do girl? something. Mm -hmm. This is the same girl. Right. This is the same girl that says I raped her and says she filed a police report that doesn't exist. That is in the same county that lost a lot of evidence. They ought to just shut that county down if they can't do their job. Well, I'll second that because right. they should have hung you. Let me ask you something. Is, is it possible that you're wrong? No, sir. Okay. And you base that on everything that we've talked about today, multiple alibis that you say multiple he told, alibis. different stories to the police, Yes, sir. Uh, all, all of these things Absolutely. cause you to, to know that he killed your sister. I know he killed my sister. Mm -hmm. Let's do the polygraph again Let's now today. Really? Yeah. She's making serious allegations against you. You've had the opportunity to deny them. Uh, I think I've put it all out here on the table. Would you agree? I would. I mean, we've we've got it out here. Yes, sir. And you you said you would take a polygraph about Absolute. whether he yes, sir. attacked and, and hurt your babysitter. Yes, sir. And you said you'd take a polygraph about whether or not you killed her Lord. sister. And I'll make that offer to both of yes, you sir. If, if you want to do that. Yes, I, sir. I, I want everyone to get closer to the truth. Yes, sir. If you're lying about this babysitter situation, you're gonna lose a yep. lot of credibility. I'm and, not lying. And you have an opportunity to... to Keep on proving my innocence. To Exactly. So I make that offer to both Thank of you. Thank you. Do you yes, want to do sir. it? Do you want to yes, do it? Yes, sir. Okay. Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. His trial. He did kill my sister. Ended in a hung jury. I didn't kill Lori. My life has been destroyed over this. So is mine. With so much at stake. If he failed his polygraph, then I think this case needs to be reopened. What will the polygraph reveal? Did you kill Lori Ann Hill? And the results are. Oh. <laughs> Dr. Phil, I'm going to be sick. That's Monday. I mean, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you, and thank you. Thank so you, Dr. Phil.